Um, if you're here for alternative giving, you're in the right place. If you're not, there's six other places to be, I understand. We, um, we are not going to uh, so much talk about uh, giving as we are going to talk today and hear about how to give. And um, I uh, ought to start with uh, an introduction or two. Um, a lot of you don't know me, although you probably know the right Reverend uh, uh, Lloyd A., Dr. Lloyd A. Doyle. And, <laughs> hey, it was, it was on your resume, man. I, I, <laughs> I put it like you spelled it. And uh, he's a pastor at uh, Shelbyville, uh, you know, First United Methodist. And I figured if Lloyd could use his A, I'd use mine too. And I'm, uh, I'm David A. Winton. I'm a new pastor. Um, my wife and I owned a staffing company here in Nashville for 20 years. And uh, uh, we sold it a few years back. And I had had the call for years. Uh, Richard Jones, where are you, Richard? There you are. Richard and I have known each other. We just decided about 21 years, and he, he knew us over at Pennington when we were there. And uh, I had had the bug and the call even way back then, but we had that business. And I've joked that said the call kept ringing. I'd look down, says God, and I'd holler, "Don't answer that!" <laughs> and so when we called the or when we sold the business, the call came, and. Uh, I picked up the phone and I have not regretted it today. I'm the happiest camper I've been in a long, long time. So um, I'm at Bethlehem, uh, United Methodist out in Lebanon, a uh, small church. And um, to segue that a bit, if I may, all of you I know from the raise of hands in the big group um, are from various sized churches. Some of this information is going to go, whoa, that's just way beyond our little church. Some are going to go, yeah, we're already doing it. Um, because you are in a little church, and maybe a more progressive church in, in the area of alternative giving. Bishop used the word, uh, hope you grab a nugget. I hope you grab a nugget. I hope you grab several um, uh, with what we're going to do today. Uh, Lloyd uh, has had experience in the area of uh, alternative giving with some things, and he'll share those later. Frankly, I have not. I'm on the board, the uh, uh, stewardship board with the conference and was involved in this, and we all had to do our job. So I, um, I haven't really had first-hand experience other than having owned my business and credit card machines and those kind of things. But I had to do a little homework. And that, I've always said I love to teach. I learned so much. And through this process, I've learned an awful lot of, about this. But uh, one thing that uh, we wanted to share with you, uh, what we're going to do this morning is some what we wills and we will not, but we're going to share what we found in this research that we've done and uh, you know, put in our heads together. We're not going to offer financial information or advice so much. There may come questions like, well, what's the cost of that? What percentage do we have to pay? What? I don't know. That's, I want you to do your homework because it's going to vary. We're not financial advisors or bankers or accountants, so uh, this is just going to give an overview. I hope you can see this, by the way. I kind of had a uh, vision of a big screen, but um, we'll, if you can't see it, I'll read as much as I can. We want to give you ideas to ponder to make that more informed decision. Can't make an informed decision without all the information. I don't know if we'll give you all the information, but we'll certainly give you as much as we, uh, as we possibly can. Um, we want to name a few resources in the area. Well, we're not going to endorse anyone. In fact, one of those resources, if it comes close to an endorsement, Don Beam over here, you saw the big kiosk in the, um, in the gym uh, set up. Um, coincidentally, I was over at my home church at Good Shepherd one night, and the meeting was about to start, and Don was making a presentation of the kiosk. And I said, can I sit in? I just happened to be given a project where I have to put together a presentation about that in a couple of months. And since then, we've had several conversations. So if I come as close to endorsing today, it's Don <laughs> just because he's here. <laughs> but, but we're also going to talk about other um, opportunities that you might look into uh, to, be, to be fair to yourselves uh, as you uh, research this. So uh, we'll offer suggestions for you to move forward in this quest, whatever it may be, whatever level you may be on, and what I think is uh, probably the most important, I saved the best for last, is we're going to make it as most fun as we possibly can. And so to prove it, we've got this guy here, our, 
ragged looking teacher. Looks a lot like Lloyd, I thought. That's why I picked the picture. And I um, yeah. said, folks, we've always said that the poor are always welcome here. And I see from the, off audience, or the offering that you're all here. <laughs> Everybody here is poor. So we, uh, we want to address that. But we also want to take a look at uh, ways of boosting our giving. We always want to boost giving in the church. And, and I found this little uh, guy here in the Stewardship Committee's latest idea for raising the annual church budget. We're going to put a coin taker on the men's room. So we made a bundle across the hall just now, by the way. Uh, but you know what? And when it gets right down to it, we're chuckling. So that's probably not a good idea. We probably don't want to do that to raise funds. But I thought what we would do is uh, take a, a brief look or a quick look at a uh, little history of giving. And uh, I'm sure there's elements to this that are, you know, uh, could, it could be elaborated upon. But in the old days, from my experience and, and what, I, what I've heard, is the church was pretty much supported because it wasn't always a brick and mortar kind of operation. It, they were out in the field. Wesley sure was. And uh, so they would, uh, the pastors would be paid by getting an invitation over to parishioners' homes. And people say, come on over and have dinner with us tonight. And the pastor would stay in their homes. I was down uh, last week at a service at the upper room, and uh, they were talking about Harry Dedman. Um, Dedman, I'm sorry. Um, and how he didn't own a car. He only had one suit. Those who may have uh, read about him or knew him. And he would travel around. He'd got, get up to a meeting like this and go, is anybody heading back to Hendersonville? I don't have a car. And he would get a ride and get his way through. So the preachers of kind of the old day depended up upon the generosity of the, uh, of the congregation. Quick little story. My very first Sunday in the ministry, the very first Sunday I, I was put out at, uh, placed out, <laughs> put out like I was out to pasture, um, <laughs> little uh, Good Hope in Lebanon was my first charge. All of 25 people, and on my very first Sunday, I got a bag of turnip greens and a couple of cabbage. Now, I also got a paycheck at the end of the month, but uh, they wanted to make sure that I got some of their garden vegetables. So uh, I think they moved into that. But then we hit a day when those buildings started going up, and the brick and mortar was put together, and the clapboard churches in the country, and they had to have a little more support than just keeping the preacher fed. They had to, you know, buy the candles to for the altar and those. And all of a sudden, had to start dropping some coins into the collection plate. Uh, when that started, not real sure historically, but it was pretty much a cash-only situation. And uh, we still do that today. All of this is over lying, you know. We, uh, just because cars were invented didn't mean bicycles went out. So uh, we still do the cash, but then along came checks. This was a huge change, a huge paradigm shift. And I don't know that any of us in here are really old enough to remember, truly, I, I'm getting there, but I kind of always remember checks. But what's interesting that they, checks have been around since 1681. They were used in uh, old uh, colonial government primarily for business, but they really didn't come into popular use until the late 50s when the micker printing, you know, the magnetic ink that goes on checks where they could scan them and where people would actually have that checkbook in their hand. And interesting little tidbit I found. And, um, uh, but what happened when that occurred is the church would say, and this is a key point to what we're talking about here today, it's, it's uh, the church would say, you can write a check. And everybody's eyes would just get about this big and go, what? That's not real money. You won't get your money for two weeks because the bank, and people freaked out. How long did that take to become normal? Where it almost, oh, then it became a tax situation where people could declare it and use it for taxes. You drop a dollar in, sometimes that's hard to track, but that check, and they went, oh, I, I get it now. And who doesn't write a check for, for this? I found this, had to share it. I love him. Well, Jeff Foxworthy says, a check? Yeah, I can write you a check. I thought that you wanted some money. Yeah, find his album. You'll, you'll hear it. Uh, 
So that's, uh, that's kind of what was, what's going on. And that's how we paid our church giving. A little history of church giving until oh, all of a sudden along comes that computer. And then, oh, the computer's got a little more elaborate. <laughs> and we could actually communicate with the bank. And then they got even more elaborate. We could take them with us, like I've done today. And then oh, the internet. Whew, was that a revelation? Was that a change? Huh? I, could, I remember sitting up nights paying all my bills, just tapping buttons. I didn't even have to write a check anymore. That was the coolest day. And then now we've got, what did I do with mine? I'd have to go back a couple of pictures, but as we know, that little gadget does umpteen million things more than that first computer that popped up there on the screen. And we'll even talk more about what that can do here a little later. So that brings us to this shift of the winds, if you will, that's going on right now. We, Talking today's a day of talking about change, and here's the change: <gasps> credit cards. Credit cards. <laughs> it's finally happened. So it's time for another sh paradigm shift. Talked about change um, in um, you know just feeding a preacher to paying him to. Now uh, we're going to go, and I'll give an overview, and then I want to turn this over to to Lloyd, but. <coughs> We can give to our churches through um, ACH and EFTs, uh, electronic fund transfers, where we just get on the computer, as I mentioned, and we can pop in, you know, ABC Church, and we can send our, you know, five thousand dollar tithe. And, um, it's there. PayPal. How many of you use PayPal other than eBay? Raise hands. Oh, we're pretty educated. Cool. Pretty educated, yeah. PayPal was first introduced it to me if I wanted to buy a book or something or Amazon. I use PayPal, but it's used for a lot more um, activity now, financial activity. Text to donation. I can get on my phone, hit a couple of buttons, put in 50 bucks, boom, plink, and I can text a donation to my church's bank account. Um, similar, but a little more elaborate, smart uh, smartphone apps. You know, the apps for your different things to get on the stock market or whatever you do on your phone. Churches now have apps where you hit that and there's um, places, buttons, links on that app to be able to give directly to the church. The Square. I'll save that one. If you haven't heard of it, I'll save that one. And as you saw with Don's um, uh, program, uh, in the gym. And by the way, uh, stop and see Don. Don, we, we're going to be busy today. We're in a lot of these things. But I encourage you, if you want more information about the kiosk, and I do know uh, Good Shepherd has, uh, is awaiting theirs um, up in um, Hendersonville. And uh, other churches around the area are participating in that and a lot of great advantages. So if I make a pitch, there's my pitch. Behind the kiosk is what we call merchant service accounts. That may be something you may not be familiar with. Basically, the banking activity that has to take place behind the mechanism of the, of the kiosk and the credit card swiping and those kind of things. So, um, yep, it's a new day. So which seating, uh, where would you like to sit in the church this morning? You, know, you want to sit in the cash or online credit card checks or... Over here when I'm out of change right now. <laughs> Key point to this this morning, we'll probably keep going back to it. One of the reasons that all this is starting to take place, nobody carries cash anymore. Nobody carries cash. I used to, a little personal side, I used to, back in the younger day, always keep about 50, 60 bucks on me. I never knew if we wanted to stop for lunch or something because I kind of needed cash. Well, then the credit card, now I've got the debit card. The cash is over in the bank. It's, uh, it's just represented by my debit card now. And I can swipe that little rascal for my $25 lunch, and I don't need to carry 60 bucks. I might have, I, I'd have to look right now, doesn't matter, but I probably have 20 tops. I don't like to carry a lot. Nobody does. So if somebody comes to church with $20, and you're only passing a plate, how much are you going to get? 
$20 or nothing. That's right. So that's going to be kind of a theme. So which one is best for our church? Lloyd going to tell us. You're up, pal. You're on. I'll see. start these around. I do have maybe one handout we'll pass around. Uh, yes, they're all the same. All righty. Theologically, what I like to use with my church is first fruits language. Uh, rather than just starting in alternative giving, um, I've tried to use the first fruits. Uh, how many of you have automatic fund transfer set up? You pay a mortgage that way, how many people? That mortgage payment comes out every month, right? How many of you pay insurance that way? Maybe your cable bill? So I'm seeing hands going up. You're familiar with this. So we pay that mortgage, we pay the insurance, we pay that cable bill, maybe the light bill, those come out automatic drafts, but oh, ho, oh, we can't pay God first. You know, first fruits. And this preaches. This works. Um, what makes more sense than giving to God first? And one of the ways you can do that is with an automatic fund transfer that recurs weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, biannually, however you want to set it up. Uh, we have several people at our church that love that, and they do it. Uh, we have others that don't do that, but they use online giving when their heart is touched, or when they see a need, or when they feel like it. And that's wonderful, too. And um, there, so there are all different options here. Um, there's not one right way or wrong way. But theologically, that first fruits idea, you know, to have that 10% or your 5%, whatever you give, come out automatically um, and go to God before you pay any other bills, that's biblical, first fruits. Um, so use that. What I've passed around there is the endorsement that Cokesbury and the Methodist Church have. Um, they use a company, NCS Services. Um, they also go by the name eGiving or Church Connect, and they're officially endorsed by the Methodist Church. Uh, that's who we use at Shelbyville. Lebanon First Church, I know, has gone with Vanco. Um, my sister-in-law's church in Alabama has gone with a company named Vanco. There are many other companies and we're going to name some of those but we did want to be connectional this is the official one of the Methodist Church it is a one-stop service I mean they offer it all they've been in business for years they have uh, 15,000 churches that they're currently working with um, if you want it they can do it and it goes from the most simple basic to the most detailed you could possibly want so um, you can get in touch with them we're going to look at some of the things you can do. The online giving. We started with that, and we started with it being private. And that means um, you had to know the website, and we did it in-house. And so if you went to our church's web page, there would not be a donate button originally. There wasn't one. And you went to the e-giving site, and you had to have password, and you got in. And we did it small, in-house, till people got used to it. Now, if we could get online, but we don't have a connection in this room, we could go to our church's website or any number, Franklin First, Lebanon First, a lot of other churches. And right on the front page, there's a button. It's in bright red on ours. It says Donate. You click on that, and then it leads you through the process of donating. Um, so we began with it being a private thing where the public was not aware of it. Um, now it's out there and the public's aware of it. It's on our web page. You come to church on Sunday, you get a bulletin. And on the back page, it says online giving, and it gives our church website. People can put that in at home. They can put it in their smartphone, whatever. It takes you there to our splash page. The donate button's there. You push on it. It leads you through the process. You see, we also, though, have a QR code, and some of you are familiar with these. You've seen them, at least. Um, you take a picture of that with your smartphone, and then, boom, 
that takes you straight to it as well. There's also an app that the company we use, eGiving has. You can go to their website and download an app to your smartphone. Um, so you know you can type it in your browser on the smartphone. You can take a picture of the QR code. Um, you can use their app. I mean, it's just wide open. It's easy. Um, where to go from there? I'm talking on this all day long. Um, ACH is an automatic check. And when you go to the website, it pulls up a picture of a check and it shows you the code across the bottom and it leads you through the process. Is this a one-time gift? you want to make it a recurring gift? Um, on our website, when you go there, we have four funds you can give to. You can have one to up to as many as you want. You can give to the general fund, you can give to the children's fund, missions and outreach fund, and then Communion Good Sam Fund. And Communion Good Sam makes sense to people who are in our church. They know what that means. Um, and they can give to that. Um, you can give to uh, memorials. I know First Church Lebanon has that. You click on Memorial. It then asks um, in whose memory is this given. And you can type in that information. Uh, we have not gotten that far at our church yet. Um, we're moving to that, but going to the memorials is a little bit more involved, but we're getting there. Um, you can reserve Wednesday night meals. We have Wednesday night meals, and some churches do that, and you can go on there, and you can register for Wednesday night. You can pay for it. That has not worked at our church for several reasons. Um, it works other places, especially bigger churches. I understand the bigger you are, the more um, popular that is for reserving and paying for events. Uh, UMW is going on a spiritual life retreat. You can reserve it and pay it that way. Uh, men's club is doing something. Um, that has not worked at Shelbyville. They, for some reason, don't like reserving on the computer. I don't know. We're still growing in that area. Uh, the electronic checks, though, is very popular. We have some come in just every week like that. Some are monthly. Um, the electronic fund transfer is very similar. Um, that's basically more of a debit, though. And, uh, well, I'll mention that. Um, it's not on the screen, but I'll go there. We currently at Shelbyville only take debit cards. We do not accept credit. Our church council and our finance committee have had long, long discussions about that. But our church currently feels it is wrong to encourage people to go into debt to give a gift to God. Uh, what we need to be doing is getting our people out of debt. <laughs> and so when you go to our website, you can run a debit card, whether it's American Express, um, you know, Visa, MasterCard, whoever. You can give by debit card, but it will not take it as a credit. And that's a theological and an ethical thing that our church has decided. There are other congregations that say, hey, if you want to pay by a credit card, that's fine and dandy. Um, that's something you, you know, a local church will need to decide. Um, but currently, we do not accept credit cards, just debits and electronic checks. The ease of this is tremendous. Um, all of these companies that you work with will um, lead you through it. The process is pretty simple. I thought it'd be complicated to integrate this, and it's not, especially if you already have a church website. But you do not have to have a website. Say you're a church that just doesn't have one. That's OK. They can go to, in our instance, egiving.org, or you can go to vanco.org whatever company you're working with, and you can interface through their homepage. Uh, some you type in your zip code, and then it gives a drop-down list of churches, and you click on that. And so even if you don't have a web page, you can still do electronic giving um, through their sites. And um, if we had the Internet, I could show this to you, and it'd make a little more sense. Does that make sense, what I'm saying there? 
So even if you don't have a church website, that's okay. You can still do e-giving. Uh, they will work with you and, and set that up. You go through their site. Um, it's pretty easy. They will, you can get it off their website or they'll fax you. It's a one-page form. You put on there your bank account numbers that you want used. Uh, the church treasurer signs it, another church authority. Um, you fax it back in, and you're in business. That's all it takes um, with the reputable companies. Uh, there are some companies out there that are in it to make money and to scalp you. And we'll just warn you, not all these companies are the same. Some will want you to sign a contract, and they'll have complicated fee pages. Um, We'd advise be leery of those. Uh, be leery of any company that wants to sign a contract with you. Uh, the e-giving through Cokesbury, there are no contracts. Um, they charge you no fees except what the bank charges. Um, so, so just be leery. Not all these companies are as ethical and above board as the others. Uh, but it's easy to set up. Um, They have all kinds of information. They have a letter you can send the congregation. They have frequently asked questions, a handout you can mail to people. There are instructions on how your church members can set this up. And they give you all of this, and um, they'll just help you in every way to get the information to the church. Um, there's a sample authorization form. It's one page. It's not complicated. Um, going to digress just a minute again. Personal privilege. We have found people under the age of 50, now I'm generalizing here, in Bedford County do not carry cash. And they don't carry checks. And if you want their money, you're going to have to offer some form of online giving. Um, we have people over 50 for which that is true, but it's particularly true with the younger generations. And on Sunday morning after a tornado, we had this happen. Uh, we had several come up after church. I wanted to give this morning, but there was no way to give. That was before we had e-giving. And they said, how can I give? Um, to reach the younger generations, we've got to have electronic means. and. Um, it's a tool, though. It's just a tool. It doesn't mean they're going to give. And here's where the sermon comes in. We have found that people over 50 have been the most responsive to e-giving. People who are above 50, who are basically settled in life, maybe do not have as much debt as they once did, who are tech savvy, and they are the ones who have jumped on board with this the most. I, as pastor, have privately inquired of some of our younger families who are very involved why they haven't embraced this. And it's tied with their history of giving, which I look at. Some pastors don't. And as I've gone and looked back at their history of giving, I see why they haven't embraced it. It's because they're not givers. And so this is just a tool. Just because you offer e-giving doesn't mean, hey, all these young families are going to suddenly start giving. We have to educate them. We have to help get them out of debt, as the bishop said, with Dave Ramsey or whoever. Um, some of our younger families are so heavily into debt, they just can't give in any shape, form, or fashion. Uh, so I do want to make it clear, just because you go to e-giving doesn't mean younger families are going to jump on board. Uh, we've got to help them get out of debt. As we do that, they do come on board, and they do use this. Um, my daughter's in college. She's a junior. Uh, she loves this. She does everything by her smartphone and electronic giving. Um, but she was taught to tithe from the time she was a little girl. Uh, so she's readily embraced it. So this is a tool. It is not a magic bullet. It's not a magic set of beans. There's still theological education and discipleship training and um, generosity training that must go on. Any questions about that? Does that make sense?
because we thought we'd do this and just, hey, all these young families would jump right on board. And we found out, hey, it's our middle-aged and older families that have jumped right on board. Um, but PayPal is also a way. Um, there are a few more fees involved if you go with PayPal. Um, with the company that we're working with, there are no fees except what a person's bank may charge. Um, with PayPal, there is a little bit of a fee in there. Uh, it's not extravagant. And this will come up in your finance committee. Why do we want to use them or anybody if there's a fee? What did you say that there was no fee? I'm sorry. Well, the company we're using, NCS Services or eGiving, there are no fees except what the bank charges. For example, yes, but there will be fees. But, the, but they're bank fees, yes. For example, if you swipe that debit card and it's a visa, um, it's going to be 3%, I believe. I believe it's going to be 3%. If you do an automatic check, it's going to be 1%. Um, and it comes up in the finance committee, preacher, why do we want to pay 1% or 3% um, when they could put the cash in the plate? And the answer is, they're not putting the cash in the plate. And if this family's going to give me $100, we get 100% of that. At the end of the month, this company bills us. They send an invoice. Um, and it'd be 3% of that. And so we would pay them back 3%. We'd get the $100, but then at the end of the month, we'd pay them $3 for that transaction. Uh, if it's an automatic check for $100, we would pay them a dollar at the end of the month. So there are fees, but the company itself does not place any additional fees. And when you're shopping for this, that's what you got to watch for, because some companies We'll load on these fees and hidden fees and charges, and before you know it, you're paying them a lot of money for this service. So, I would like to just mention, I think sometimes that gets us involved because we don't want to pay that. Mm -hmm. But with that, you're saving them time. Oh, yes. It's a good point. You're exactly right. Um, it's easy to set these PayPal's up if you do want to go that way, and a lot of people use it. You just need to realize there is a little additional fee there. Um, it is money. Um, that's right. Um, there is a varying amount of delay on the transfer of funds depending on what bank you're using and what company you're using. Some are almost instantaneous. Some it can take up to a day or two days for the funds to transfer. Um, we found that's not really a concern as long as we get the money. Uh, that doesn't bother us. Um, but sometimes there is a little bit of delay but it's good money and it goes from one bank account to the churches and you're done. Um, they give full accounting of this. Um, before we get into that, whenever somebody makes a donation to us, uh, we get an email that's sent to our business manager, gives the person's name, the fund, the amount, the date, the time. Um, they do have some very sophisticated software now. We're not there, but you can integrate your church accounting software, if you have that, with their online service. And so all of a person's giving, what they gave in cash at church, um, what they paid Wednesday night to eat the meal, and what they gave online is all out there in the cloud. Uh, we have not gotten that far yet. We don't have our accounting books hooked up with them in the cloud. But you can do that. I mean, the sky's the limit with this. And so wherever you are 24-7, you can get on that smartphone or computer and you can check your total giving to the church. Currently, what you can do on our site is you can only check what you've given electronically. You have to call the church office to see what you've given, you know, otherwise. 
But everything you give electronically, you can get on there and, and get that listed for you 24-7. Um, but it, the benefits are increased giving. Giving will go up. And each year you do this, if you promote it each year and use their resources, and you do have to promote it, you have to educate and promote it, you can double your online giving every year for the first four years. And that's pretty much a national average. Um, people can set up consistent and recurring donations. You can emphasize it's a first fruit donation. People can give 24-7. People can give spontaneously. Like say, if there's another horrible hurricane like Katrina or Sandy, we can go on there, I can put in Katrina fund, Sandy fund, whatever, and we can use that for two or three months to get donations just to that. Um, so it's easy to change and manipulate um, as situations demand. Um, it connects with the mobile generation and the way they use money. Um, there, there are just many, many benefits to the online giving. You can text a donation. Um, we have that option. We have not had one person use it yet. <laughs> uh, they either go with the smartphone directly to the site or they like the online giving. Um, I don't know why, but the texting a donation has not caught on as much as, as the other. Um, but it's pretty easy to do. Um, there are some companies that allow unlimited texting. Um, what that means is the $10 cap is not on there. Um, if somebody's texting a message $250 um, and they have set that up with their cell phone provider, that will be honored. Uh, most cell phone providers, so like if you're with ATT Verizon, they'll put a cap on it and they will not accept more than a ten dollar text um, but if you set that up with them there are ways to do it it can be unlimited so you can text any amount of money you want to but that has to be set up ahead of time yes this does not come to the church that's added to um, well, it does come to the church, but it's added to your cell phone bill. Yes. And like I say, we've not had anybody do this yet in our congregation. Yes, I saw another hand. And all that's in here, I'm not reading it as I should. But uh, The texting is an option. We've just not found anybody in our church that wants to do it. The mobile smart app... Um, people like that. It does the same thing as taking a picture of the QR. It does the same thing as putting in that website in your browser. It takes you to the very same place. It's just how you like to do it. And, um, it's affordable. It's easy. It's reliable. Um, it's 24-7. It meets the needs of people today. But again, we have to teach them to be givers, especially the younger generations. Uh, we have to help them be givers and use this tool. Well, I guess that's enough of my rambling for the moment. I'd talk about it all day long. Do you have more questions for us sit down? Again, we're not getting into the technical issues because the companies are so different. Yes, up here. Yes. Yes, the church has to have a PayPal. Yes. Okay. How, how do you fill out the reports and things that you've been getting? Have they been helpful in, in what you need? And, I mean, because we have to end up getting, getting records and, and understanding, comparing what people pledge versus what we received and all those kind of things. Yes. Is that good? I mean, are, do you have a good experience or what's your experience with it from the business office perspective? Yes and no. <laughs> it is kind of what it is. Um, the emails come in and then our business manager has to hand enter that. We have a computer software and she then has to enter that into the computer books. Uh, we are not integrated. Um, 
I don't know, do you know of any church that said, all right, here they can do this, but that you can integrate your software so that the donation is automatically put in your books? We can do that, yes. You tell it. No. You tell it how you want to be communicated to. You can tell it, send me a list at the end of every business day of the donations that day. Or you can say, send that to me once a week. But you tell the company you're working with, the e-giving company, how often you want it sent to you. Um, ours even says, do you want a report sent if there were no donations? And our business manager does. And so she got one yesterday, and it said there were no donations during the last 24 hours. Uh, but you can go online at any time. Uh, we have an administrative password. We can go in, we can get the names of all the people who are signed up to give because you have to register. Um, we can see they're giving history and everything 24-7. But she then has to take that and then physically key it in to our bookkeeping program. Uh, she's found it doesn't take that much time. Um, it's, it's not really been that big of a burden to her. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, James. And ours does that as well, but we can't get it to integrate yet. We're messing up. But they can, we can uh, download um, a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet. Um, our church accounting software is called Church Windows. They're out of Ohio. And there is some glitch where it's not merging exactly right, but they're working on that. It's supposed to. Yes. We do at our church, yes. Full time. Yes. No. <laughs> we would. I pushed the kiosk very hard. And the church council said, absolutely not. Uh, to them, it's a symbol of I don't know what. But they see it as a symbol of mammon coming into the church. It's a physical piece of furniture. And they have just said no. Whereas somebody during the service can whip out that cell phone and give right there. And they have no problem with that. For some reason, they just said no to the kiosk. The good thing about pushing the kiosk is because there was such resistance to that, not one person voted against e-giving, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's a, I'm not talking against the kiosk, but our church just said, no, preacher, we will not put those devil machines in our church. And I'm like, what do you mean devil machine? But because there was such antagonism towards that, they said, oh, but all the other giving we're fine with, and it went through 100%. Okay, it's a good question. We're still in our first year, and so we're still growing it. Percentage-wise, I don't know. I'd have to think of the percentage. We have about 184 giving units currently at our church. Those are giving units. Ten of those are automatic check transfers that come through every month. We have another dozen that are spontaneous checks. They are not automated, but they come here and there. And then we have just sporadic gifts that, that come from visitors or um, different things. So I would say out of the 184 giving units, we have less than 30 right now who are using it on a regular basis. But we're in our first year. And we're still, you know, growing it and promoting it. And uh, What's the average age of your congregation? Oh, I don't know. It's the average age of the average Methodist church. We're no different. Mostly middle-aged and older, but we do have a lot of young folks. Yes, James, and then in the back. It sounds like about 20 I'm rambling. Talk all day. 
dollar amount would be more than 20 percent of the total fee? Let me think. How I say it? Here's where confidentiality comes in. <laughs> And I, as a pastor, know what everybody gives in every church I've ever served. My father before me and others in my family have done the same. We believe in that. You get into some confidentiality issues because if you have a member of the church, and we have one, who goes around telling everybody, I just love being able to give electronically. And she does. She also gives an unbelievable amount of money. And we can't let it be known <laughs> that the primary chunk of money coming in is coming from one person. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> New people, I would. S no, no, that's a person who just loves it for the convenience. I would say this year we have had five or six people become givers for the very first time who have never been givers, and that is awesome in today's world. But I suggest, let's finish up with what we have here, the house. Yeah, you've got a lot more to go. Well, not a lot more, but I do want to, how much time? Yeah, like four minutes. Really? Yeah, I took way too long. I'll tap that real quick. Great information, though, uh, Lloyd. Um, Obviously, Lloyd's had some experience here, and I want to remind us of the purpose of today. It was not all the percentages and the how many's and the who what's and the where's. It's just that this this stuff is out here. I'll bust you this quick. We talked about this. Anybody use one of these? I, I, yeah. I have been with someone who has used it. All right. But I've never used it. I gave them. It's called the square, and uh, again, since we're running running low on time, a little hole in the top of your phone. The square literally pokes into that hole. You can take a credit card, slide it across the square, tap in an amount, and it's a form of e-texting. Uh, it just... But that's what the individual does. That's, well, actually, actually the phone... Our PTO has one. Our PTO has one at school. Actually, the phone would belong to the church. Yeah. Okay. And because, so as people, obviously you see the limitations right away to form a line, like a wedding line, yeah. with your little or your phone, and people are going, but yeah. it's about it. Yeah, it's a uh, key, yeah, exactly. Key at the end of your arm. Uh, that will plug into your phones. And um, Square also offers free pay with Square app. There's an app that goes on there. You pop it and uh, play with that. I'll buzz through these real quick. Accepts major credit cards. There's a flat rate of 2.75, um, plug it right in and go with it, tracks donations and class fees, and it sends receipts electronically. You can touch a button once you've done that, and it will send a, a receipt to your email. So. Oh, this is a lot of verbiage. You can read this one. You can get these at Radio Shack where you can get on the site um, on uh, the Square site, they'll send you one free. Radio Shack might charge you ten dollars or so. But, uh, it's basically how to take one, and I just ran through that. You can even designate on the screen whether you want it to be for your pledge or for the mission trip or whatever. So um, you approve it. There's a little signature place you can scribble on the screen, or and of course you can set up one of these in your back room. <laughs> Remember we said we were going to have some fun? <laughs> Nobody wants that either. But what do you do when you go to a restaurant? What do you do when you go? That's, they still have that. And so, uh, so we, saved, we, saved the biggest, we saved the biggest for last and uh, bringing out the big guns. And I just love playing with little, little tricks that PowerPoint can do. But the giving kiosks. And... Um, we already covered the fact that a lot of people come to church without cash. Um, it's a touch screen, and I invite you some some.
challenges. I'd like to point out some, some challenges were brought up about the giving kiosk. We're going through the same paradigm shift with that giving kiosk we did with checks in 1959. I'm sorry, we just are. Uh, there are some, I think, some legitimate claims about credit, but they sure don't have a problem popping it in the red box machine for a movie. You know, you control your own credit. And I'll ask quick Don, because I don't know, can you limit it to just debit cards on yes. yours? Yes. I figured you could. So um, it's a touch screen style. You walk up to it, you pop in the pop in your credit card, and it does just all kinds of really cool things. So uh, uh, I posed a question on here. Imagine what ministry could be funded if you're able to connect with dozens outside of the normal offering time. They could be there on Wednesday night for dinner and go, I forgot to give something. It's one of the things I have a challenge with in my little church is if they're not there, they don't pay. They don't give, I shouldn't say that. They don't give. And I go, well, you know, I, if I'm not there or, or Sue keeps a checkbook for a week and I go to church without it, I make it up. I know the deal. I'm the only one in the church who seems knows that deal. Yeah. Gotta make, got make a deal with everybody else. But uh, it's a visual reminder, it's always there. It's, it's right there and it develops a consistency. The graphics that are placed on it, you'll see with Don's uh, display out here and you can have your church's graphics. Well, there I go, I put it on myself. I don't want to accept something. Uh, it does a printed receipt. It's got a little automatic printer right on the unit, and it'll print you out a receipt. Uh, it will uh, not only do the giving, but it can be arranged to, I know we talked at Good Shepherd that night, they've got the Little Lambs Daycare, and either setting it up a separate one, or they can integrate it right into that same program and set up much. Um, and it's encrypted, it's secure, some of these things that go over the phone, uh, we already know. I got a little virus on that computer the other day. We had to get it out of there. Those things are flying with these, uh, with the Wi-Fi, where this is all encrypted and safe. So, <coughs> real time, uh, web based, so it's not. You don't have to load or, or worry about the computer uh, frying and crashing because it's it's all your information is web based. Um, I don't know where I got that figure, but uh, a 16% increase in giving through the surveys that were taken with the churches. So, and I guess for Joe Ford's once we we'll use it again, um, they can be purchased or leased. Um, Don can share some of that or if you do your homework. Um, one time setup fee for the unit for the graphics for the programming of the computer and so on. And there's a monthly service fee per unit, and that, uh, remember I mentioned that merchant service account that has to be established for you to communicate credit card and have it run through the banking <coughs> process. But uh, big thing here, and I should have put that in big letters, do your homework. This today was not intended to give all the answers. It's to give, you know, <coughs> here's all the car companies, you go find which model you want kind of idea. So uh, I would like you to, to jot these down though. Uh, and we don't endorse these, and there's, in fact, I don't even think I put uh, your egiving.com. I wasn't aware of that, but uh, g3giving.com is done. Uh, easytide.com is another company. And again, I don't know other than I went in and put in giving kiosk companies. So I don't know if they're good, they're bad, they're crooks, they're the greatest. I, the first one's good. That's what I hear. <laughs> Don is local, by the way. He's in Brentwood. Um, so <coughs> Simplegive.com, Securegive.com, AdvancedKiosks.com, and then there's a manufacturer. In fact, I was curious. Is this where you get yours by any chance? The KioskMarketplace.com. They make it, I guess. <coughs> they don't. I'm sorry. Took off that pretty quick. One of the concerns that we've had talking about this at our church 
it's how do you educate, inspire your people. Even people who give by checks and they start giving, they pay once a month. On the other three Sundays, they feel guilty passing the collection <laughs> and not putting in. And, it's, and, and how you educate a congregation that maybe as you hold the plate and pass it, you give of yourself. And yeah. that, but but that that's, that's probably that. Dean. That's probably another whole seminar. Mm -hmm. My response, though, I've heard churches say that they will have a little card in the queue that allows people to yeah. fill in. I gave it the first of the month, and at least it shows it's a psychological right. thing. Or yeah. um, I've seen a lot of churches that have the laminated cards that say, you know, <laughs> I do I do electronic giving, and then they just talk some in and you get them out of the. Have the same idea. Yeah, and that way you keep using and then it. And look yeah. for look yeah. for the good. Yeah. Um, back to the decide what method meets your needs. Small church, large church. Uh, here, I think, is a key. Probably should have put it at the top of the list. Start with your local banker. Everybody I talked to in my research basically said, start with your local banker. Talk to the people, your financial consultants who you deal with, and. Uh, go from there and what going to work. Ask a lot of questions. You're not afraid to do that. I've seen that today. You just didn't have time to give all the answers. Um, search the internet. I did. I found out a ton of And then uh, talked to the other churches. Yeah. Oh, boy, he's got nothing else to do. Huh? <laughs> and then here's a little bonus. Uh, and, I, and I'll make it short. So here, anybody here from Good Shepherd? Any chance? Sean's not in here. This is just a little, write that down. Good Shepherd, for one, there's others, um, use this service. It's magnificent. Basically, what it is are all of the retailers that are in the area offer discounts that come, or offer percentage returns, I should say, um, when a gift card is purchased to your church. If I know I want to go to Best Buy and spend $100, I give the 100 to the church, they give me a card, and Best Buy or, or Script Zone will send back to the church, and the percentages vary. Some of them are as high as 25%. Um, and it goes back to the church. So in their newsletter every month. Yeah, Sharon? Also, another service that is supported by the general church is umcmarket.org okay. Okay. for Got online it. shopping, and your church gets a donation. So that's Kroger right. does it for Kroger almost every, every church. I think those Kroger. But Script Zoom is one to take a look at. Thought we'd end on a funny, we started on one. How come the waitress gets 15% and God only gets 10? <laughs> or I should have scribbled that out and said 2.4 or 2.6. So, so I just had fun with this and uh, we want to make it. So, yes, done. This, isn't, this isn't my show at all, but this is my wheelhouse. You put in your day today, and we appreciate well, that. Thanks. And I'm not here to give you a commercial, but I'm bursting with information here. This is this is my venue. Yes. So if we do all of the things that they've talked about, and I can give you a ton of information on not only us, but everyone else, and I am local, would love to come visit with you, or visit me in the gym, in the gym because I'm just... Oh, I know you I, are. I want to be up there. I know you are. Talk and answer. I know Can you are. Can we get this PowerPoint, or is there? A That's what this is for. I'll send it to you. Oh, great. Yeah. Good. You put your email, and if I can read it, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get on this even hopefully this afternoon. Pop in everybody's name, and send that to you. Okay, good. I think we've got lunch coming at us. Thank you.